Today, Amy and I are going to talk about what we do or want to do in the name of research. It's 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100% reason to remember the name. Okay, so my primary form of research, because I am somewhat uh, cash-strapped being a fledgling published writer and having a husband with a new business that he's starting, is to use the computer. I know, the boring computer, but I use it to look at documentaries because most of my ideas are inspired by real-world events and stories that I've read or come across. So I watch a ton of documentaries. Um, for Gated and For Stray, I watched tons and tons of cult documentaries, um, footage in news like stories about Jonestown and Waco and all of those things. So for me, documentaries are huge. Hi, I'm here with my book fort. I love books. I'm not a hoarder. I swear I can still walk around in my house. Just because I had to get a bigger house to store all my books does not make me a hoarder. But books are uh, my favorite form of research, as you might guess love me some books and um, I have everything from books on human psychology to mythology to forensics to poisons my husband's a little bit scared but uh, he's told all of our friends that if he ever disappears nobody will ever find the body but I did it so he's covered all right so I'm on watch list and that's because most of my research is a little bit um unconventional is maybe a good word and it's because uh, I look up like how to strangle someone and them not die how long will that actually take what happens to the body when you strangle someone and they don't die I also look up things like how to build a homemade bomb and how to um, transport it to a location and set it off and unfortunately recently I had to look up how to make a fertilizer bomb and it just so happens that my husband's business involves buying large quantities of fertilizer so yep you can guess I am on all kinds of watch lists, I'm sure, because he's bought all this fertilizer right after I was looking at the Anarchist Cookbook and How to Build Fertilizer Bombs. So um, I'm still waiting for that knock on the door. Hopefully it doesn't come. Trouble! Uh, for my Latter-day Olympian series, uh, part of it is set in Greece, which is the heritage of my character. So of course I had to go to Greece because I had to experience these phenomenal places uh, for myself. For instance, there might be a destination wedding and it might be at an amazing historical site and we might have had to visit. So I get to write it off and I get to enjoy a fabulous place that I've always wanted to visit. And I wouldn't swear that I set books places I want to visit, but um, I do have a tendency to have my characters move around. For instance, the fourth novel in the Vamp series, Fangtabulous, I said it in Salem, Massachusetts because it was somewhere I'd always wanted to go. I knew there was so much history with the witch craze and hysteria and sadly deaths. I love traveling places, experiencing the history, feeling the atmosphere of the place for myself and then I get to write about it and hopefully share that with everybody else. My last form of research is to try to do whatever I can um, like my characters would do. So if they get tied up, I will actually tie myself up to see if I can get out of it, which sounds crazy. I'll have, you know, my husband do it or whatever. Uh, if my characters shoot a gun, I will go to the gun range and shoot guns, especially the type or make and model that my particular character is using to see what it feels like in my hand, to see how it feels when it goes off, the sound it makes, all of those things. So I've actually taken courses on gun safety and I've gone to target ranges and like the craziest part of that research is that when I've taken these gun courses, the most interesting thing about the whole thing were the people that were at that course. I mean, everyone from like a granny who must have been about 78 who'd never shot a gun in her life, and let me tell you, being next to her at a target range was a little scary, <laughs> to, you know, a divorced housewife looking for extra security, to, you know, a couple out on a date. Who Battle training! <laughs> If you saw our video last week, you might suspect that I am absolutely hopeless with a sword, and you'd be right, but I did have a friend in college teach me how to use a sword, starting of course with practice swords so that we wouldn't damage each other um, like I tried to behead myself in last week's video. Um, so I do know a thing about wielding a sword, um, or a katana, or, or various things like that, 
And also, I took archery in high school, so uh, it's been ages, so I could not tell you for the life of me how to use it anymore. But I do remember, aha, wait, wait, it's coming back to me. Um, but I do remember how to pull a bow, um, how certain things get in the way, um, how, how and when to release, where the draw has to come to. So um, I do know at least a certain amount. Now, I haven't used archery in a book yet, even though Apollo um, is, among other things, an archery fiend. Um, but someday it may come into play and I'll at least have an idea of what to do and probably not embarrass myself. Who are taking this course as part of their date. It is the oddest thing to do. So it's a great place for researching, believe it or not. But beyond doing, you know, the shooting ranges and, and the gun courses, I also am um, trying to hit up like EMTs and police officers to do ride-alongs. Um, I need to go see a medical examiner at some point to sort of see the deterioration of bodies and how they, you know, examine a body. I haven't quite gotten in there yet because I don't have the connections quite yet, but I'm hoping to get in there soon so that I can do some more accurate research that's not on the computer. All right, so today you got a good sense of what Lucienne and I do to research our books. We would love to hear what you do in the comments, so please leave us a couple. See you next time. Bye.